What if I pose this question? Who was the only college player with a higher ceiling than Michael Jordan himself? Before you brush that off as a hyperbole, know this prodigious talent had MJ-level athleticism at 6'9 and finished his NCAA career dropping 23 a night. Tragically, he never played an NBA minute. Meet Len Bias, perhaps the greatest unfulfilled promise basketball ever witnessed. Yes, you heard correct. Over 35 years ago, a phenom named Leonard Kevin Len Bias took the talent flush ACC by storm drawing apt comparisons to a young MJ for his scoring prowess and gravity-escaping athleticism. Too good to be true, you say? Well, this isn't a fictional tale, but rather the tragic, real-life story of Len Bias, perhaps the greatest what-if talent basketball history has ever seen. So today, we'll dissect the eternal debate. Could Len Bias have blossomed into a player better than Michael Jordan himself? But before we begin, we would like you guys to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell icon so you do not miss out on any amazing and entertaining content. First things first, who exactly was Len Bias? Standing at 6'8 with graceful athleticism and fierce competitiveness, Bias was a phenom at the University of Maryland in the mid-1980s. As a senior, he averaged a staggering 23.2 points per game on over 54.4% shooting. With his NBA-ready physique, sweet jumper, and thunderous dunks, Bias had scouts drooling over his seemingly limitless potential. In fact, Boston Celtics president Red Auerbach was so amazed that he traded to get a draft pick two years early, just to select Bias. So, was Bias really as good as Michael Jordan in college? Let's compare their NCAA careers. Like Bias, Jordan also dazzled in the talented ACC conference. He averaged 17.7 points per game at North Carolina. However, Bias put up nearly six more points per game at Maryland. Jordan was certainly a gifted scorer, but he didn't overpower games quite like Bias. Len was built like a power forward, but moved like a guard, dominating inside while also able to hit smooth mid-range jumpers. In their first showdown in January 1983, a starting Jordan unsurprisingly led UNC to a narrow win, dropping 21 points while sophomore Bias scored 11 in a reserve role. But their second meeting that season marked a turning point that put the college basketball world on notice. Len Bias had arrived. This time, Bias entered the starting five, still coming off the bench early on. But with Jordan in the midst of a 25-point first-half blaze, Maryland coach Lefty Drizel posed a perplexed question to his locker room. Is there anybody here who can guard Michael Jordan? Up stepped Bias' teammate Herman Veal, who locked down MJ in the second half as Bias began making his mark. Len attacked the rim relentlessly, throwing down an electric alley-oop that set the tone for a statement performance. Behind Veal and Bias' smothering defense, Maryland stunned UNC for their first league loss. And even with just six points, Bias served notice he could impact games against titanic opponents beyond scoring. Jordan rebounded with 21 points as UNC split the regular season series a year later. But a first-half scoring explosion from Bias suggested the tide turning in their ballyhooed rivalry. Len's 16 first-half points keyed a 24-point outburst, as his athleticism and shooting touch continuously put UNC on its heels. Alas, Jordan and UNC took the final showdown with Jordan netting 25 efficiently on 11 and 15 shooting. Though Bias managed 15 points on a quiet night, those tantalizing glimpses of scoring prowess validated his status as an ACC equal to Jordan ascending the national ranks. So, while UNC dominated the overall team scorecards, we witnessed Bias beginning to close the gap with Jordan through those four exhilarating head-to-head -head affairs. He proved himself a willing defender against elite scorers and showcased an ability to ignite his offense when focused. So, if Bias was so unstoppable in college, he seemed destined for NBA glory, right? Well, sadly, we never got to find out. Because just two days after being drafted by the Celtics, Bias tragically died after overdosing on cocaine. He was only 22 years old. It was a devastating loss, both for the potential of a young man's life and the career he could have had, which leads us to perhaps the biggest what if in basketball history. Let's imagine that Len Bias didn't pass away and instead enjoyed a full, healthy NBA career. With his rare blend of size, skill, and athleticism, how good could he have been? Well, those who watched Bias play in college projected him to be nothing short of a superstar, an explosive scorer, tenacious defender, and future MVP candidate. In fact, many talent evaluators predicted Bias would be better than Michael Jordan. Keep in mind, 
This was coming from respected basketball minds, not hyperbolic fans. Could you imagine? MJ with 3 extra inches and 25 more pounds of muscle? It's crazy to think about. Now, obviously, Bias never got the chance to validate those lofty projections by actually playing in the NBA. But given his extraordinary college production, it seems very reasonable that he could have developed into an elite pro. So, while we can't say definitively that Bias was better than Jordan, it sure seems possible given his unprecedented potential. Tragically, the world never got to watch Len Bias blossom into a basketball superstar, but his shocking death still profoundly impacted several key figures and institutions in the game. First, Bias's death essentially extinguished the championship window for an aging Boston Celtics squad. With stars like Bird, McHale, and Parrish entering their mid-30s, Bias was viewed as an ideal succession plan to carry the mantle. Instead, the heartbroken Celtics never recovered, and despite a valiant run by the original Big Three, they never reached the finals again. Just a few years after drafting Bias, their dynasty crumbled for good. Many fans wonder, what if Bias teamed up with Bird rather than Jordan preventing those payoff runs? How many more banners might be hanging from the Garden Rafters? On the flip side, Michael Jordan undoubtedly benefited from never having to face Bias over a full career. With his closest contemporary rival tragically eliminated, Jordan's road to the GOAT status became a bit less bumpy. Could Jordan's Bulls have still dominated the 90s if Len Bias teamed up with Larry Bird out east? Or would MJ's title count have ended up a bit lower? We'll never know for sure, but it's possible Jordan may have needed to work a bit harder for those rings and MVPs if his athletic peer was still around. So, when fans debate the greatest what-if basketball talents, Len Bias's name inevitably enters the chat. The mythical destroyer of rims who even the mighty Michael Jordan must pay homage to. And rightfully so. Bias's tantalizing potential leaves us pondering perhaps the greatest unanswered question in basketball history. Could he have surpassed Michael Jordan as the GOAT? Let's further analyze why Bias elicits such eternal intrigue as an all-time enigma. First and foremost, his dominance at the college level was virtually unmatched. His senior season at Maryland still stands out as one of the most awe-inspiring years ever for a college forward. For context, Bias averaged 23 points on a staggering 54% shooting. Keep in mind, he terrorized defenses before the three-point line expanded. At nearly 6'9", Bias moved like a wing but overwhelmed opponents like a power forward. That unprecedented versatility is what made his projection so astronomical. Talent evaluators saw a mountain of a man who could break opponents down off the dribble, sky for thunderous slams, and rain mid-range jumpers. In a nutshell, the skills of an elite guard wrapped in a chiseled 220-pound frame with world-class athleticism. Scouts understandably deemed Bias a can't-miss generational prospect. Given Bias already dominated college hoops as a junior, while Jordan was still finding his footing, it's rational to project massive NBA upside. After all, Jordan improved leaps and bounds under Dean Smith just as Bias did under Lefty Drizel. Both men were gym rats dedicated to adding new skills each offseason. Now obviously, given his tragic death, discussions around could-have-beens with Bias remain purely hypothetical. But based on work ethic and college production, it seems short-sighted to outright dismiss visions of Bias competing with Jordan as the NBA's peak player. Keep in mind, Bird and Magic were both nearing retirement as Bias entered the league in 1986. Would the door have opened for Bias to rule the Eastern Conference and stockpile MVPs and titles before Jordan peaked? Could Jordan's Bulls have overwhelmed a Celtics core led by Bias and aging legends in the late 80s playoff clashes? Or might Boston have continued contending, leading to more dispersed championships in that decade? On an individual level, Bias likely would have made multiple all-star teams and all-NBA squads given Boston's exposure and his projectable stardom. Whether he fulfilled the highest-end forecasts of supplanting Jordan atop the sport forever will remain one of basketball's great unanswerable questions. But given his doubly tragic death mere months before his first NBA minutes, Bias's status as the eternal what-if talent seems cemented for generations to come. Even three decades later, fans still love discussing, reminiscing, and speculating about these larger-than-life icons. Michael Jordan and Len Bias represent a dichotomy of celebrated success and talent extinguished too abruptly. Yet, they remain bonded by their shared North Carolina roots and the fascinated intrigue of rivals left unfulfilled. Two ACC legends whose tales still captivate young and old basketball devotees alike. And therein lies the deeper connection. Jordan fulfills his destiny, 
captivating audiences for years as his legend took root in real time. Meanwhile, Bias exists frozen as this mythical, could he have been better figure, representing immense potential tragically never realized. I'd suggest Jordan himself still wonders what if, when reminiscing on those thrilling ACC battles with the great, almost rival of his era. So, while Jordan rightfully retains the GOAT belt, we're left to wonder whether Bias could have pushed him or even claimed that top spot himself. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my conclusions. And hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and consider subscribing to the channel for more sports videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.